Good morning, church, and happy Resurrection Sunday. What a powerful time for us, able to gather together in this very unique situation. We can worship and we can praise the Lord together. The last several weeks have been some of the darkest moments that mankind we have ever seen. But in the midst of fear, anxiety, uncertainty, my brother and sister, remember, just like the disciple of Jesus Christ on the day of his resurrection, we stand before an empty tomb. He's not dead. He is alive. And many, many more people will come into the place of salvation because of his resurrection power. Let the angel, the message of the angel of the first resurrection day, with everyone who listen, we can hear from them. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 to 6 said, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has risen, as he said. Notice that word, as he said. God is still in control. So praise God for our risen Savior. His resurrection proves he is the God who triumphed. We have been worshiped the Lord, and we have studied in this series, The God Who Is There. And today we continue to um, study in this uh, wonderful setting the message of the God who is triumph. We can see that God powerfully have defeat the enemy and bring salvation to us. Praise God for His plan of salvation to restore mankind back to Himself. And today I invited you to let God peel back what Men eyes cannot see what going on from the cross to the throne when Jesus rule and reigns, and to see your place in history this morning. Let's go back to where it all begin. The first Adam have committed sin, lead to the last Adam who come to restore mankind. The plans of restoration immediately after Adam and Eve have sinned. God announced his plan of salvation in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And Jesus, while bruising the head of Satan, would provide man redemption and total restoration, all that man was created to be. And we have studied that on the first message. And we see wonderful that God have a plan of salvation right after Adam and Eve have seen. Man's relationship to God and his authority was to be restored by the substitution uh, for the sin that men have committed. And Jesus had to come and die on the cross for us so he can restore us. Like it, like in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 5 said, God sent his son, born of a woman, that we might receive the full right of sons. Praise God that he have a plan to restore us so we can be son and daughter of God. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Praise God. What love that had been demonstrated. That when Jesus was crucified on the cross, he became a curse for us. So we now can be passed over. We're no longer under any curse, but we enter into the place that we can receive the blessing that God has pronounced over Abraham and his descendant. And now we, as son and daughter, uh, children of Israel, spiritually, we can enter in and receive that blessing too. Jesus come 
to redeem us from sin. And we praise Him for what He has paid for on the cross for us. He has paid dearly so we can be restored. And now we can see that we can become God's children by redemption. What a blessing that we once walk away from God, sin against God, but now He restores us. And through Christ, we can become God's children. Adam had brought sin into this world. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 said, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin. But Jesus came, and He brought with Him righteousness. Romans chapter 5, verse 19, Through the obedience of one man, that the man will be made righteous. Praise God, because what Jesus Christ did, we now can be restored. We, through the obedience that He have received the cross and walked the cross for us, that now we can be restored and we will be made righteous. Praise God. Jesus also bring the good news, the great joys of salvation. In Luke chapter 2, verse uh, 10 to 12, the angel come and, 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 and announce a wonderful thing when Jesus come to this earth, um, born into the manger. He say, I bring you good news of great joys. A Savior has been born. Praise God. What a powerful act of love that God has demonstrated for us. He also brings peace to men in God's favor. And when we are restored to God, we reconcile with God. Then we will receive the peace that God has always wanted us to have. What a powerful thing that Jesus did for us. When man is properly ordered in the right relationship with God, His government brings peace, and we can live in a kind of peace that the world cannot understand. We praise God for that. Now let's look at how this is important for us that we can see ourselves. We can see ourselves in God's story. Let's look at Jesus as He ministered with authority. When Jesus operated on earth, He operated as a man. In order for Jesus to restore us into this relationship and restore us the authority that God gave to us, Back in Genesis 1.26, Jesus had to come and prepare a body. And he walked this earth, ministered with authority as a man. And he become a prototype for us that we can see ourselves in him. That Jesus as a man, he has purposely emptied himself of the right of God. He suffered temptation as a man. He overcomes Satan as a man. And if this authority was the authority that God at creation have given to mankind, then we can also walk in this same authority as redeemed men and women of God. And that is your place in the story of God. God wants you to know that He has restored you in Christ so you can walk in the same authority that God has pronounced when He created mankind in Genesis chapter 1. Jesus also wants us to remember that God planned for all believers as new creation in Jesus. We can become true men and women that we were created to be in God's plan. And it's very important for us. I know the world is going crazy with this COVID-19. But God's still in control. Things can be canceled in our life in this day. But the plan of God can never be canceled. There's hope in Christ. There is power in God because He is a triumphant God. And He wants us to know that the authority that He gave it to us, that we can walk in that. 
when you become a new creation, when you accept Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, you can walk in this blessing, in this authority, and you can minister like Jesus did. And we see in the Gospel of Luke, uh, Jesus' authority demonstrate when he come as empowered by the Holy Spirit. And he come into the synagogue. It's not the first time that he come in there. But when this time, after he received the empowerment from the Holy Spirit, people recognize that power and begin to pay attention. Our eyes is on Jesus. The crowd recognize that Jesus has something that they need to have in their life. And we see other example. Jesus put authority over demon. His authority over sickness. His authority over nature. His authority over even death itself. And we will see that this demonstrate. And powerfully, Jesus walked this earth. The last 33, uh, the last three years of his 33 years on earth, he walked in the power, demonstrate for us that in him, in him, and the same resurrection power that have resurrected him from the dead is work in us. We can walk in that level of authority and we can minister to people. We can demonstrate the kingdom of God where we are. Jesus is our example. Jesus is our example of how we should walk in authority. Jesus have demonstrated that as a man, he emptied himself of God's nature and took on the nature of man, walk in obedience, receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that he can walk this earth, minister to people, helping people preach the gospel of the kingdom. And that's the same uh, way that Jesus wants us to walk. He wants us as men be restored, be justified, be declared righteous. We can receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we can walk and minister in power. When we can walk and minister in the level of authority that God has delegated for us. Just imagine the enemy, Satan, watching Jesus in a man's body. Minister like that. Demonstrate the authority and the power of God like that. That's why Satan hated it. And Satan wanted Jesus dead. Satan hated Jesus so much that not only he, he, he wanted to get rid of Jesus, but we, he wanted him dead. He wanted him tormented. Or of Satan, principality, power, ruler of darkness, and wicked spirit, they came to rejoice the time that Jesus was crucified on the cross. They must have been prepared for their moment of great victory. And they come together as Jesus was buried in the tomb. Everything is silent. They thought that they have everything in control. They have victory over Jesus. But Satan did not know. Did not know. He used deception to work at bring one third of angel to follow him, falling angel to follow him. And through deception, that now he worked through the religious leader at that time. And they demand to crucify Jesus, demand Jesus' death. But praise God, Satan's deception had not worked against Jesus. Jesus knew everything, and he walked to the fullness of the plan of God so we can be restored. What an awesome Savior that we have. Jesus paid the price of our sin by dying on the cross. He delivered all of our sin, sickness, disease, and infirmity into the place of torment. And he brings it to the depth of the earth, to shallow, to the place in the, the earth. When he buried in the tomb, what happened? What happened on that day? On earth, 
we see the earthquake. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40 said, For at Jonah were three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish. So the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Jesus buried in the tomb. And Jesus has foretold that to his disciples, just like Jonah of old in the belly of the fish. He said he will be buried in the tomb. But he knows what's going on. Right after three days, something wonderful will happen. We also see the veil is torn in two from the top to the bottom. Now open for us a new way that we can come into the presence of God to worship Him, to magnify Him. We don't have to go through man mediation anymore, but we can go directly into the place of worship and see and worship God face to face as we come into this relationship. In the spiritual war, we see that the battle which on between Jesus, our sacrifice, and Satan with his demon host. There's a battle going on. While Jesus buried our sin and the world's sin into the bottom of the pit. It's foretold by David in Psalm 88, verse 3 to 6, that he bore our sin. He paid the penalty of our sin, and he bring everything down into the bottom pit. He bore the judgment of sin for us. And in this prophecy of David, described that what happened when Jesus, after his death, bearing our sin, he descended to the deepest part of Haiti, which is called Shallow in the Old Testament. And here we see those who have died in unbelief were held in torment and judgment. Jesus went to that place and bring sin, everything that he have carried on his shoulder to that place. Psalm 16 verse 10 said, Because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. Something wonderful, David already foretell that Jesus, even though he was buried three days in the tomb, but that's not forever. We also see it's foretold by Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 8 to 10. And when we see that it's pronounced, and so you can see your, your place in this, the story, the, the, the God story. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Who and who can speak of his descendant? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the congregation of my people, he was stricken. Verse 9, he was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich of his death, though he has done no violence, nor were any deceit in his mouth. Watch verse 10. Yet it was the Lord who will crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord make his life a guilty offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his day, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. We see here that Jesus paid everything, even buried in the tomb. But my brother and sister, it may look bad on Friday. It may look bad on the Passover day. But the first Sunday come, the first day of the week come, when Jesus resurrect from the dead, and He will forever be our living Savior. He's the Lamb of God. On the cross, Jesus feel, fulfilled the function of the sacrificial Lamb of God. That Friday we have talking about. When Jesus, on that place, just like on the first Passover, the Lamb, one year old, no blemish, perfectly were killed, and the blood of the lamb come and, and spread and smear on the doorpost and the lentil. And as a sign that when the angel of death go through Egypt 
to kill the firstborn of man and firstborn of, of, of uh, animal, whose house have the blood of the lamb will pass over. And that household will have to eat the whole lamb on that day, cannot left anything. It's a picture for us that when we receive everything that Christ have done for us, we receive him to the fullness. And his blood is in spread over our heart, our life. It's marked us as the people of God because we have the Lamb of God come and die in our place in order to protect us, in order to restore us, in order to give us blessing. So right now at this place, I want to pronounce the blessing of God, the protection of the blood of Jesus over every one of you right now and your loved one and your property, everything that belongs to you that Jesus has paid for now in protection. I pray that God will spread his wing to protect you right now because he is the Lamb of God. Come and have died in our place. The benefit of his blood can protect us and pass over our life, even to the last judgment of God. Praise God. They bury Jesus in the tomb. And the scripture tells us that the big stone is rolled over to cover the tomb. I've been in Israel uh, last June and walk into a place that they believe that that is the tomb that Jesus would bury. And we say there is a big stone outside that is cover the opening. And when I walk inside, I see there is a chamber. There are three beds made out in the rock. I believe that Jesus would lay there a scripture in Isaiah 53 I just read for you once ago. He will consider the wicked and send them to death. But when he die, he will bury in a man, the rich man tomb. And when we see wonderful picture of the empty tomb that stands forever empty because our Lord and Savior was buried in there but as the message of the angel that he no longer here, he have risen. And today, we can see that what a blessing that we have in our life. When Jesus delivered our sin into the deepest part of the pit, the power of God came upon his body. The scripture tells us in Acts chapter 2, verse 27, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. It's already in the plan of God. Jesus foretell his disciple that everything is will happen the way that he will suffer in the hand of the elders, will take outside of Jerusalem war, be crucified, dead in our place. But on the third day, he resurrected. And we're going to see at that point, when everything is finished, when everything is accomplished, the scripture tells us that when sin has been paid for, and the scripture tells us that the power of God begins to come upon Jesus' body, the resurrection power begins to manifest. And we see that Jesus arise. He resurrected from the dead. The gate of hell cannot prevail against Jesus. And we will see that he burst forth. Now, the, the stone that had been covered the tomb, it had been rolled away, not because it's, 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 it's heavy and it has to be rolled away so Jesus can walk out. The, the, the stone has to be rolled away. So the whole world can look in and see they cannot find Jesus in that tomb anymore. The resurrection power of God have come 
and resurrect Jesus from the dead. Jesus has resurrected. Having paid the penalty of sin by his death on the cross and delivered our sin into the depth of the pit, Jesus took the key of death, hell, and grave away from Satan himself. Pay attention to that key. We will go back to that point. Having defeated Satan and broken his power over death, the tomb could not hold longer Jesus' body. And we will see powerfully the scripture tell us that in the explosion of power of triumph, Jesus rose from the dead. Satan and every demon have been defeated. Praise God. The God who is triumphant. The God who is triumphant. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 to 21 said, And his incomparable great power for us who believe, that power is like the working of his mighty strength, which is exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Verse 21, far above all ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title can given, be given, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. This verse, we find the great demonstration of the power in the New Testament. If you study the New Testament, you see that there's five words, five different Greek words used to express the power in New Testament. And here in this verse, we find four of them. Verse 19, power, dunamis, the store power, explosive, miraculous power, working, energy, operational power, or power release or activate. And we also see the word mighty, ikus in the Greek. It's a sheer ability of strength, overcome and the undefeatable power. And lastly, very, very powerful word, even though it's a described power, is strength, is kratos. It's a ruling power manifested or delegate the greater demonstration of power is found when God raised Jesus from the dead. When I studied this, it shook me to the core. You remember in the beginning, when God created everything, He just spoke the word and things create. But when God raised Jesus from the dead, he used his mighty power and strength. The Christos, the ruling power manifested or delegated. The power that is so powerful that every cell that had been dead in Jesus for three days begin to bring, receive life. Everything that holds Jesus now, that power have raised Jesus from the dead. I hear the good news. Your part in God's story is in that great power manifest in our life. Romans chapter 8, verse 11, give us this wonderful revelation that we need to understand. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who dwell in you. The same Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you and me. That same power. Now I know that we need to wash our hands, we need to protect ourselves, personal uh, cleaning, 
when we go through this COVID-19. But we will not walk in fear. Yesterday, our president, our vice president, he said that we as Christians, we not walk in fear like people without hope. Because we have the resurrection life inside each and every one of us. And that power can raise Jesus' body after three days in the grave. That power can heal you, can heal your mortal body. It's give life to your mortal body through His Spirit who dwells in you. So do not walk in fear. Yes, we need to be considerate. We need to pay attention so we can help the elderly, the vulnerable, the one who have uh, sickness in, in their body before they are weak and their immune system is not strong enough. Yes, we need to protect them. But my brother and sister, because of the resurrection power of Christ, I declare over you now, you will not walk in fear, but you walk in the power of God, in the strength of His might. And that is who we are because of Christ's resurrection. Praise God. Jesus, after He had resurrected from the dead, he revealed himself to his disciples in 40 days in many different occasions, proving that he alive. In triumph, he led the captive, the captivity captive. Jesus triumphantly ascended far above all of Satan and his kingdom. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 to 10 said, This is why it said, When he ascended on high, he led captive in his train and give gift to men. We, we can see in verse 9, what do he extended here? I mean, accept that he also descended to the lowest earth, earthly region. In verse 10, he who descended in the very one who have ascended high, than all the heaven in order to fill the whole universe. And we see here that Jesus entered into heaven. Suddenly, there is no word to describe the joy of the heavenly host at the return of God's Son in his rightful place in heaven. How could man describe that victorious return of his Father in heaven. David described it in Psalm 24. Verse 7 and 10 say, Lift up your head, O you gate. Be lifted up, O ancient door, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O you gate. Lift up your ancient door that the King of glory may come in. Verse 10, who is he? This King of glory, the Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Selah. Pause for a moment to think about it. King of king. The victorious one, the triumphant God, have victory over death, Hades, Satan and all of his demons have proclaimed victory. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, Jesus declared, I am the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the key of death and Hades. Wow. Praise God. He said, say, I am the living one. I was dead. And behold, I'm alive forever and ever. My brother and sister, the last few weeks, sometimes we feel like, God, are you still there? Are you still on your throne? 
look like this tiny thing, COVID-19, bring harvest into this whole world. Where are you? Are you still alive? My answer for you this morning through the light of the word of God, yes, he is. He's alive forever and ever. He is a triumphant God. You see, to save mankind, God did a huge thing. This pandemic, even though it looks bad right now, that when we go through on the other side of this pandemic, we will see that God is bigger, much bigger than anything that we have witnessed the last few weeks. Nothing can throw God's plan. He's a triumphant God. Jesus now had the key. Jesus came into heaven shouting, Satan is defeated and I have the key. Jesus had the key of authority in his hand, which he had taken away from Satan, who had stolen them in the garden when he deceived Adam and Eve. Now Jesus, through his death, have come and take away that key from Satan. And you know what? This is where we come in. Why are the key important? In the first revelation of the church, Jesus told his disciples that they had the key of the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. I saw somebody by revelation about to receive the key. The key of the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 and 19, said, And I also say to you that you are Peter. On this rock I will build my church, and the gate of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the key of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you buy on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Praise God. Isaiah mentioned another reference on the key in Isaiah 22, verse 22. I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David, that he open no one can shut, and what he shut, no one can open. Wow, what a powerful key. That when he opened, no one can shut. Whatever he shut it and lock it up, no one can open. Wow, that's the thing about to get very excited when it comes to this message that I want to share with you. My brother and sister, the key of the government and the authority were in Jesus' hand and on his shoulder. Jesus took those keys and gave them to his church. The authority on this earth has been restored to mankind. Somebody say, oh, hallelujah, this place. Wow. The key, the authority on this earth have been restored to mankind. God wants us to experience Christ's resurrection power in our life. It is an available power and a necessary power in this evil day. We need to take it one day. To take authority over this COVID-19 and declare your power and your authority because Jesus has delegated that authority in your hand over sickness and disease. The key to walk in power to tie up in knowing. The revelation that comes to us, not head knowledge, but, but it's tied up into this revelation that I'm sharing with you today. When I studied this many years ago, it 
totally changed my way as I walk as a Christian, as a minister of the gospel. I can no longer walk in weakness in timid, but I walk in authority and power because Jesus I took back the key of death, of hell, the key of the kingdom of God, and give it to the church. And he said, as the church, whatever we buy here on earth, God will buy it in heaven. And whatever we lose here on earth, we'll lose in heaven. Wow. Did you hear that? Powerful. We need to remember that. So we have the authority that have delegated to us. I believe that there are people here this morning that need to experience Christ's resurrection power, salvation, sickness, family problem, spiritual problem, financial problem. We need to experience Christ's resurrection over those area. Yes, COVID-19 may bring fear into many people's life. Yes, it bring hardship, financial problem. But I'm here to share with you the hope that we have in Christ. He said he will provide for us. He said that we are now son and daughter of the kingdom of God. And God the Father, the God who are triumphant, is in control. He will supply our need. So look to Him and receive from His hand. Yes, we have things that we face in our life. But I invited you to come to Christ and experience that power of resurrection. By Romans 8, 11, say, that same power. And come and minister to us, that same power that have resurrected Jesus from the dead. It's inside each and every one of us. And he can resurrect our mortal body. He can heal our mortal body. So I invited you this morning, if you never accept Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, to pause right now and receive that work of salvation that Jesus has paid the penalty for us, has been crucified for us, he was buried in the tomb for us, so our sin can be buried with him. And he resurrected to be our living Savior. I invited you to open your heart to him and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm returned to you now. Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I repent for my sin. Now I heard that wonderful plan of salvation that you have worked out way in the beginning. Right after Adam and Eve sinned, you have declared your work of salvation. And I receive it personally for my life right now. And I invite you to come into my life to be my Lord and Savior. And Lord, write my name in the book of life that heaven will be my future home. God will be my father. And I'm joined into the family of God. I'm God's children by salvation now. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Restore, renew, and give me a new beginning. Thank you, Lord. I accept your salvation to be mine. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have said that prayer, please let us know. We want to help you in this day.
personally want to see you when church opens again. Because I know that God has said this time, nothing surprised God. COVID-19 is not surprised God. But God knows everything. Maybe this time is a time that you quiet enough to hear this wonderful news. So congratulations for your decision today. And for those of you who are Christian, let us hear again the message of the angel on that first morning. He has risen. He's alive. Let that truth resonate in your whole being right now. You know that you have a living Savior. He's right here with you. He's right here with you, even in your living room today. What a blessing for us that this day, Resurrection Sunday, for the first time, that we can worship God at home and invite Him to come into our family room where our family come together and worship. It's unusual, but I believe that it's a blessing. And as pastor who know by revelation the blessing of the power of resurrection, I want to declare this prophetic prayer blessing over each and every one of you right now by the power of resurrection every aspect of your life that have been constituted shame and reproach it is now revert in glory and in virtue today every form of grave where any aspect of your life is buried I declare open right now in Jesus' name. By the power of the resurrection, I declare right now the giant in you will bounce back in life. The giant that have, have powerfully moved in the hand of God have been shut down because of fear and intimidation. In the name of Jesus, I declare that giant bounce back to life right now in Jesus' name. By the resurrection power of Jesus, every believer will rise up to the place that God is about to use you in a mighty way. Every deadly habit holding you in bondage is cursed to the root in Jesus' name. You are free, be free in Jesus. The last challenge of your health is the last you will see today in Jesus' name. By His resurrection power, be healed in Jesus' name. By the power of Jesus' resurrection, what men have turned impossible become your testimony today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. In the midst of all of this going on, the silver light of the work hand of God is powerfully manifest. I read, I heard, I watched many testimony how God has shown up in the time of need for people. And He's here. He is triumphant God. He can be right where you are to help you. Have a blessed resurrection day. Have a blessed time with your family the rest of today. May God bless you. Continue to walk in His resurrection power. You are blessed. You are children of God. And you are protected under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Shalom, church. Pray that we will soon see each other to celebrate the goodness of God. Remember, He's alive. Hallelujah.